In the previous video I showed you this really simple, almost full THT PWM to analog converter. Now this works pretty fine, but I decided to give an upgrade and this is the new PCB. But before seeing how this works, if you want to support me, you can either subscribe or buy me a coffee. The PCB is not difficult to build, in fact it is composed only of a buffer stage, an RC filter and a gain stage. But we have to carefully select the operational amplifier, which is the main AC of this board. In fact, we have to check three things. Our operational amplifier should be rail to rail, have a good leo rate, and a low enough question question. My God, and a low enough quiescent current. So let's start with the rail to rail feature. I'm gonna compare an LMV three five eight with a standard LM three five eight. Those will have the same supply as the Arduino Nano. Now we're gonna see the signals on the oscilloscope. The first one is the uh, PWM signal, the second one is the LMV, and the third one is the standard LM358. Okay, here we have the uh, three signals displayed, and as you can see, the violet one is lower than the blue and uh, yellow one, and this is because the uh, violet one is not rail to rail. As you can see, we have 4.7 volt on both the first two, and the third one has 3.7 volt. Okay, and so that's the effect of uh, not be rail to rail. Okay, um, so a rail to rail operation amplifier can actually go up to the rail. In this case, 4.7 volt. Now this is what happens when you try to buffer an input sine wave, which is the yellow one. You can see the output uh, uh, cannot quite reach the top of the input sine wave because the our, our operational amplifier it's not rail to rail. Now for this Leo rate test we're going to use the LMV358 which is the rail to rail one and another operational amplifier which is the one I used in my PCB. Okay, let's turn on the PWM signal. There we go. Now the signal here is at 500 Hz, don't know if you can see it. And all three of them seems almost identical, see? So at 500 Hz we have no problem. So let's raise the frequency to 5 kHz. Let's zoom in. And we start noticing something. The blue line doesn't rise as fast as the violet one. So let's again increase the frequency to 50k. And look at this. <laughs> See? It's not even more a square wave, it's a trapezoidal wave or something like that. And all of this because our LMV cannot rise quite as fast as the other operational amplifier. Which, as you can see, doesn't rise instantly, but it's really really good. Less than half a microsecond to rise like 5 volt. Whereas this one, well, it's trash. So the higher the slew rate, the faster your operational amplifier can change voltage. The operational amplifier used is the OPA4992, but two alternatives you can use are the OPA4991 and the OPA4990. The 4990 has the lowest slew rate, but also the lowest quiescent current. The 4992 has the highest quiescent current, but also the highest slew rate. And the 4991 is the one between them. Now let's take a look at the board. We have the input here, then we have the adjustable RC filter that we can adjust with this uh, potentiometer. Then we have the deep switches for gain select. And we can turn on or off the gain using this switch here. Uh, you can see there is off or on. And then we have this other potentiometer for custom gain. Um, well, what else? Well, we have, of course, the output pins here. As last, I also added a, a screw terminal, 2.54 mm screw terminal for your external uh, power supplies or batteries or, or something like that. Let's go and test the board. But first, if you want to support me, you can buy the board on the shared project of PCBWay, which is also the sponsor of this video. If you want really good looking PCB, I highly suggest to check PCBWay.com using the link in the description. They can also assemble PCBs for you or offer 3D printing and CNC machining with tons of material to choose with. Just check 
pcbway.com. Link in the description. All right, so this is the setup. We have here the encoder uh, under this white cable. Uh, we have the old display, the board that I made, and the multimeter to check the output voltage. Now, as soon as the duty cycle rises, also the voltage rises. And up on the OLED display, you can see the 8-bit value of the duty cycle. Okay, now we are almost on the maximum value. And there we go, we have reached our maximum, which is 4.67 volt. Uh, which is actually the supply of our Arduino. It's not because it's lower. Let me probe it to you See we have 4.67 volt. So yeah, it's not 5 volt But our rail to rail operation amplifier can go up to our rails Now if you want more precision you can uh, use a 12-bit PWM signal like I'm doing from my Arduino and you can see we have really really fine control like 1.2 millivolts each step 8.5 9.6 10.8 so yeah 1.2 millivolt per step which of course follows mathematics now what if you want to use a 9 volt battery to power our pcb so okay there we go we have our uh, battery that powers our pcb and now if we reach the top of our the maximum value of our pwm signal we should read uh, as before 4.67 volt there we go something like that but we haven't reached the voltage of our battery so here it comes the gain that you can find on the back of the pcb as you can see and we're gonna try to use the gain using the deep switches so now uh, I'm gonna toggle this switch here from the off position to the on position sorry guys I have the camera see now it's the on position and as you can see now the voltage is rise to 5.15 volt which is 1.1 gain see all these deep switches are down so we have 1.1 gain now if i uh, toggle the first switch again with the camera is difficult so if we turn if we toggle the first switch see we have a 1.5 gain as the board says now let's raise the voltage okay so this is the setup we have here the Arduino Nano with the encoder, the OLED display, the PCB, and this is my breadboard power supply with 35 volt output and 9.4 uh, milliamp uh, of the current draw. And this is actually the quiescent current of uh, my operational amplifier. And down here we have the multimeter. So let's rise uh, the PWM. Let me put it down here hopefully you can see so let's rise the duty cycle and as you can see the voltage is rising I'm using a custom gain using the potentiometer so the deep switches are all on the up position and eventually we will reach the maximum voltage which is a uh, 35.4 volt something like that okay there we go we almost reached our maximum voltage and let's see 35.39 as my meter here says see we are on the maximum voltage and we are getting a little bit of current draw of course isn't it cool now uh, our arduino thanks to uh, our pcb can reach this high of a voltage I've also done a quick load test. The supply of the amplifier is 9V, whereas its output is 5V. Those are the results. Keep in mind what the datasheet says about swing from rail when you load the output. This is what happens when you load the output with 100 ohm 
there is a huge difference between 9 volt supply and 5 volt supply. Ok, for anyone of you interested in the schematic, we start with the decoupling capacitor uh, on the OPA4991. And I select the OPA4991 because in my opinion it's the most balanced one. And then we have the channel, was channel A schematic. We start with the PWA input signal that then goes buffered with this operation amplifier. And then we have the RC filter. The RC filter is composed of a potentiometer and this resistor here just to have a lower bound in case the potentiometer is set to 0 ohm. And then we have the uh, formulas here for uh, the cutoff frequency calculation. You can see we have from 33 Hz to 33 millihertz of uh, cutoff frequency. Which is, I mean, yeah, it's pretty low, but yeah. Uh, the capacitor here is 4.7 microfarad. You can use whatever value you want. Then we have the other operation amplifier here. Uh, we have the two switches that can enable or disable the gain. So if they are in set in the first position, you can see there is here a short circuit, so we have no gain. And if it's set to the other position, uh, we have the resistors that form the feedback and um, so we have the the gain we start we have the first uh, uh, sheesh. we have the first resistor here that is 10k and the other that is 100k but then we can with deep switches we can uh, parallel all the resistors here there are the formulas and so the more we power the resistor the higher the gain becomes. Um, that's it, there isn't uh, uh, really much more going on, the channel B is the same as the channel A and the connectors are just the connectors. Now let's play a bit. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe and see you next time, bye.